The idea in string theory is that elementary particles, instead of being point particles that obey quantum mechanical laws, are little loops of vibrating string that also obey quantum mechanical laws. And the beauty of that is that it describes many different things all at once. In Edward Witten, the award-winning physicist and major proponent of string theory, has just made a shocking announcement in a recent live interview. String theory is currently the only scientific theory that brilliantly ties all the facets of our universe together. We need it, and we need to understand it better to understand who we are and how we came to be. However, in the live interview, Edward Witten revealed that we still don't know as much as we thought. Edward's words were so disturbing that they left many renowned string theory experts scratching their heads, wondering what the next step for quantum mechanics and general relativity will be. Were we wrong about string theory all along? Why would Edward Witten drop such alarming information at this time? Join us in this video as Edward Witten just made insane announcement about string theory. Many scientific laws and theories have emerged over the years. Scientists develop these laws and theories in a bid to explain the workings of our universe and how it all came to be. Some of these laws form the backbone of our scientific achievements so far. One such law is Einstein's theory of relativity. Published in 1915, this law encompasses two great laws of physics, special relativity and general relativity. Special relativity deals with the relationship between space and time. It does justice to all physical phenomena in the cosmos. General relativity, on the other hand, deals with gravity, explaining the law of gravitation and how it relates to the forces of nature. General relativity is an inseparable part of cosmology and astronomy. So, what is the theory of relativity? Newton's theory of relativity states that the motions of bodies included in a given space are the same among themselves whether that space is at rest or moves uniformly in a straight line without circular motion. While Newton's law of gravitation and theory of relativity may be the significant players in our knowledge and understanding of the cosmos, there's another law worth mentioning. This law or theory goes beyond just explaining how stuff like gravity works. It ties everything together to create a framework imagery of how everything works together. This theory is the string theory. String theory is an exciting theory that merges quantum mechanics with Einstein's theory of relativity. Quantum mechanics is the branch of physics that deals with subatomic particles, explaining how these particles interact and exhibit properties like wave-particle duality, energy quantization, and so on. Note that subatomic particles, in this case, include both matter and light particles. While Einstein was the champion of solving gravity's mystery, quantum mechanics, on the other hand, had many contributors. One of the most significant contributors was the German physicist Werner Heisenberg. In 1927, Heisenberg formulated the uncertainty principle which states that it is impossible to calculate or measure an object's exact position and momentum simultaneously. This, of course, wasn't referring to the real world, but to the quantum world of particles. To break it down, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle explains that the more you narrow down on a particle's position, the less information you have about its speed or momentum, and vice versa. According to Heisenberg, this happens because of a particle's wave-like nature. A quantum particle consists of a packet of waves, so momentum isn't definite. The location of a particle isn't precise either due to its wave nature. And so, you can only narrow down on one property at a time, never both. The uncertainty principle was so phenomenal to the scientific community that it earned Heisenberg the Nobel Prize. Today, it has been generally accepted as one of the fundamental laws of quantum mechanics. Its simple formula and brilliant explanation made it an excellent addition to the mathematical archives of the scientific community. But an even more wonderful theory came after it. And just like the uncertainty principle, this theory was simple and brilliant. But even more, 
it dealt with a significant problem that no previous scientist, even Einstein, could handle. This theory is string theory. The string theory proposed that subatomic particles were all one-dimensional strings, looped and vibrating together. Similar to how a musical instrument can create different notes with different strings, particles vibrate in different ways and cause different effects. The idea is that elementary particles are not just point particles that obey quantum mechanical laws. Instead, they're loops of vibrating strings that still obey the quantum laws. String theory allows for many different quantum-related entities all at once. For instance, a violin string would have different harmonics of vibration. Plucking a single string would trigger the higher harmonics, and the resulting combination of different harmonics is what we call a musical symphony. For the string theory, the harmonics are perceived as various elementary particles like electrons, protons, and so on, meaning that all of these particles are different modes of vibration of a single string. So you can say that the vibrations of strings create the building blocks for protons, neutrons, gravitons, hadrons, and so on. A string is actually relatively small. According to the theory, the size comparison of a string to an atom is equivalent to comparing the size of an atom to the solar system. This means that strings are tiny beyond imagination. Getting the exact size or shape of these strings hasn't been possible yet, as there are still some parts of the theory that need to be tested. You see, while string theory is good at bringing the various dimensions of physics together, it fails at being verifiable. The string theory is what it is, a theory. It has never been tested or verified in actual experiments and scenarios. This is why some scientists like Oppenheim have lost faith in the theory and have even begun to explore other options. Jonathan Oppenheim is one of the many scientists who don't believe string theory is what it promises to be. The professor at University College London used to be a strong proponent of the string theory until he got tired of all the assumptions and weird mathematical manipulations. Today, Oppenheim believes that gravity is an entity that cannot be fully understood with our quantum tools, nor can it be squeezed into the quantum realm. For Oppenheim, gravity cannot be explained by our quantum framework. And this is why most of our quantum equations and calculations only result in unnatural infinities. Oppenheim is currently working to invent a new theory to replace string theory, one that can be tested and proven. Given that this theory is still not tested for real life applicability, you're probably wondering why it has lasted so long in the scientific community or why it was even accepted to begin with. Well, that's because the string theory does justice to some very mind-breaking aspects of physics. For one, it is very predictive. You see, atoms, electrons, protons, and all other elementary particles are complex to study. We can't access the quantum realm to deal with these forms of matter up close, so we really can't tell what these particles do as they move along in space-time. Sometimes, the particles may break into two, and other times, they merge. Everything is submerged in a never-ending complex of probability. Sometimes, when specific quantum-related events or singularities are detected, scientists have to use special quantum laws to try and compute the results. In other words, even when you know what particles are changing, you don't know how they react or the results. This has always been the primary issue with standard quantum field theory. String theory makes things simple in that. If you know what the string is, you also know how it behaves or interacts. When we view quantum particles as single point particles, they tend to scatter and become difficult to study. But there's no scattering when we consider these quantum particles as strings. Just as a string moves smoothly, so do string particles transition smoothly to a new state, thus creating a smooth picture of space-time. In other words, string theory is more predictive than standard quantum theory. Quantum mechanics requires lots of mathematical calculations, and sometimes even these calculations do not clearly explain how particles behave. Often, experts have admitted to running into infinities in their quantum calculations. Edward Witten, the famed American physicist and mathematician who championed string theory, 
stated that these sorts of mathematics results are obtained when dealing with cases where two or more singularities coincide in space-time. But here's the thing, such problems do not exist in string theory. In fact, gravity is a definite inclusion for string theory, whereas gravity cannot work with standard quantum theory. So, it is easy to see how string theory became a sensation in the scientific community. It has always been a dream of scientists to have something that could explain everything in one go. Einstein did justice to gravity with his theory of relativity, but particle physics hasn't had that breakthrough yet. So far, only bits and pieces have been achieved over the years in our study of quantum particles. String theory is the one that makes the research and approach to understanding quantum mechanics easier and seems to cement the world of gravity and quantum mechanics together. Witten explains that the string theory is so rich that it forces gravity upon you. In other words, if you begin the mathematical calculations using string theory to solve a quantum problem, gravity pops out of the equations. This indicates that string theory is the natural or ideal merger between the quantum and gravitational aspects of physics. Here's where it gets interesting. In string theory, the graviton is one of the vibrational states of a string. The graviton is the quantum particle of gravity. If gravity existed in the quantum realm, it would only do so as graviton. Although graviton is believed to exist, it hasn't been detected in quantum physics. However, by representing the graviton as one of the vibrational states of the string, the string theory offers a way toward a quantum gravity theory. As a string travels through space-time, it creates a sheet. The kind of action a string performs is also related to this sheet, which somehow resembles a tube in Witten's graphical illustrations. Edward Witten is the leading voice behind string theory. Born on August 26, 1951, the mathematician and physicist has made many outstanding breakthroughs, severely impacting the world of pure mathematics. His outstanding research work in string theory, quantum gravity, and other areas of mathematical physics earned him the Fields Medal Award by the International Mathematical Union. Witten also has several other awards, such as the Golden Plate Award, Pythagoras Award, Isaac Newton Medal, and the National Medal of Science. He was the one who revolutionized string theory, developing it into the superstring theory as it is now known. The superstring theory is based on a concept Witten introduced called supersymmetry. It suggests that each particle in the string system has a partner particle. This concept also indicates that the equations for force and mass are identical. However, Edward Witten has stated that there may be much more to unravel about string theory. He believes the theory is correct, but some other problems still need to be solved. While some may see this as a red flag or an indication that the theory is false, Edward Witten doesn't. In fact, he believes that this is actually a sign that the string theory is correct. Usually, in science, when you solve one problem, a higher one pops up. This sequence usually continues until the final breakthrough is made. We've seen this sequence play out several times in the past. It's how we achieved monumental milestones in science, like the invention of electricity and the light bulb. However, Edward Witten isn't sure how many layers of mystery we'll have to peel off before fully grasping string theory and all of its possibilities. One fact that worries Witten and other supporters of string theory is the issue of dimensions. You see, string theory doesn't play within our basic three-dimensional restrictions. In fact, for the theory to work perfectly, it requires 10 dimensions of space. Witten believes that since a string vibrates in many different ways, these extra dimensions of space are necessary to be able to define all the elementary particles and their forces, along with gravity. However, the question is, do these hypothetical dimensions even exist? How can we say these dimensions exist when we can't even see them? Witten believes it's all down to technological advancements. Several wavelengths of light were invisible to us until recently when technological equipment was created. And so, Witten proposes that these dimensions will soon be revealed with the next generation of scientific tools. 
He strongly believes that these invisible extra dimensions exist and are part of nature. However, despite its appealing nature, many have criticized Edward Witten and his superstring theory. The major cause for debate here is that there's no way to test it. Nearly everything about string theory has still not been proven through scientific experiments. Even the supersymmetry suggested by Witten hasn't been verified by any scientist on the planet. In his earlier works, Witten shared that supersymmetry would finally be discovered this century. However, many doubt this. Even mega-scientific tools like the Large Hadron Collider don't look like viable means to verify string theory. And so, many are asking, could string theory be wrong? If it isn't, what tangible proofs can we hold on to as evidence? Shockingly, Witten admitted the possibility of the string theory being wrong in a recent interview with Nova. Here's what he said. I guess it's possible that string theory could be wrong, but if it is in fact wrong, it's amazing that it has been so rich and survived so many brushes with catastrophe and has linked up with established physical theories in so many ways, providing so many insights about them. I wouldn't have thought that a wrong theory should lead us to better understand ordinary quantum field theories or to have new insights about the quantum states of black holes. In other words, Witten holds a reservation for the theory, just in case it is actually proven wrong. I'm pretty sure you're wondering why a scientist would go public with a theory that has no tangible proof or why he would defend it for many years only to reveal later that it may possibly be wrong. Well, you see, such is science. Usually, when a groundbreaking theory is formed, it must necessarily be subjected to a series of tests and experiments before it is proven true or false. Frankie, the scientific tools or means to test Witten's superstring theory aren't at our disposal yet. And given that the theory seems to simplify one of the greatest problems of quantum mechanics, it's understandable how it quickly garnered attention and acceptance. Also, it's important to note that Edward Witten was a mathematician. He had calculations and a formula to back up his string theory, and he did a good job of simplifying it for even a non-physicist to understand. Such incredibility made his theory irresistible. In the eyes of Witten and many other believers of the string theory, the only thing standing in the way was an invention that could finally be used to test things out. It's kind of like how the astronomical community waited for the James Webb Telescope to verify all the theories and ideas they had about the nature of the cosmos. James Webb has cast a light on the cosmos, allowing for some of the deepest and most hidden parts of our cosmos to appear. It solidified some age-long theories and predictions that weren't proven. What if the same thing happens to Witten's superstring theory? What if a few years from now, the world sees Edward Witten as the 21st century Albert Einstein? While all this may come to pass, the sad truth is that decades later, pretty much nothing has been tested and verified about Witten's superstring theory. The scientific community is becoming impatient, and many are questioning if the theory was correct to begin with. You see, Gravity is not like electricity or other forces found in space-time. Gravity is actually a consequence of space-time. And so, scientists like Oppenheim believe that if you quantize gravity, you're basically trying to quantize space-time. Doing this will only create bigger problems and may even lead us to have an entirely false foundation of quantum mechanics. Oppenheim considers gravity to be a unique entity since it dictates the geometry and curvature of space-time. This creates a background structure for our universe, one that we might lose if we try to quantize gravity forcefully. Oppenheim suggests it's better to try to inculcate gravity into quantum physics whilst leaving it in its classical form. And so, while some scientists like Witten are seeking ways to bring the string theory into full light, others like Oppenheim are seeking new ways to solve the quantum mystery. Oppenheim is seeking a new approach, following his work on semi-classical dynamics, to merge quantum mechanics and gravity. Will this lead to our next quantum breakthrough? And would it displace the controversial string theory? No one knows. But for now, 
the string theory has proven to be quite a handful for scientists. The difficulty in getting to the climax of this theory has made many doubt it and deviate from other branches of physics. Even Witten, who has dedicated his life to the theory, seems to have had a career shift. In recent years, Edward Witten has been focusing on another branch of physics, condensed matter physics. Although Witten described his interest in this field as an extension of his work in string theory, many skeptics disagree. For them, the famous physicist may have grown tired of the sheer assumptions and irregularities in string theory and decided to focus his efforts elsewhere. Is Edward Witten secretly trying to run away from his superstring theory? Or is this just another effort to prove his theory right? We're not sure. But the truth is that although the string theory seems like a solution to most of our quantum issues, not everyone in the science community buys into the idea. For many, it is simply a theory with so many promises and few results. Also, there's the question of whether or not the anticipated science instruments of the future would actually verify this theory or debunk it. Recently, we've seen several controversies in the world of cosmology as new JWST revelations are disputing the Big Bang Theory. What if something similar happens to the string theory? What would that mean for our current model of quantum mechanics and our progress so far? Well, for now, only time can tell what will be. But until that day comes when we can genuinely verify what's true or false, string theory holds a special place in the heart of the scientific community. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, click on the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.